everyone, welcome to the Oaklords YouTube channel. In today's embroidery tutorial, we're gonna make probably the hottest item that I see everybody making right now. Today, we're gonna make an in the hoop zipper bag that is a dog poop bag holder. Now, we're doing the ghost dog version, and this comes from Off With Their Threads Embroidery. If you haven't heard of Off With Their Threads, I will have a link down in the description of this video. Go check it out. I promise you, your cart is going to be overwhelmingly large. Every single pattern is amazing. But her dog poop bag holders right now, these are the most popular items. I see this constantly all over social media. Now, this is the ghost dog version. And let me just walk you through it real quick. You can see it's small. She even has a hack. If you have a four inch by four inch embroidery hoop, how you can do something like this on there. So if you buy the file, it comes with it. You have like a zip file and one of the files in there is the four inch by four inch hoop hack. And if you're interested in seeing how to do that, leave a comment down below and maybe we'll do another tutorial on my smaller machine. So just show you how to do that. But this is the one for the five inch by seven inch hoop. It is absolutely adorable. You can see we have this little zipper here. Open that up. And then we just have a little pouch here with lining. I am doing the lined version. You don't have to add lining, but I'm, I'm a bag maker, so I love adding lining to everything. And then you see right here where his little nose is, there is a little hole right there. And this, so you would put your roll of unused dog waste bags in here and then pull it out through that hole. You can see on the side, we have a little tab, so you can add a key ring to that. In today's tutorial, we are going to be stitching in a little like little clasp, and I'll, sh I'll go through all that with you. There's a lot of options here. You can see for the hole right here on the front, I did a little like cut, like a little plus sign cut. I just want to try that out. The pattern actually does suggest that you cut through all of the layers, so you have a perfect circle here, and then that satin stitch just covers it up. You could also skip the satin stitch and just do a grommet, which is probably what I would suggest, especially if you're gonna sell these. Um, a grommet is going to last a long time and all of the yanking and stuff, you know, threads eventually can wear down, the grommet won't. So if you have a cam snap rivet press, you know, my favorite rivet press, if you have one of those, you're gonna want the 12.1 millimeter grommets and the die and cutting tool that go with that. So that way you can just cut it, press it, you're done, it takes less than a few seconds. So I am a huge, huge fan of this. I can tell you I stitched this up yesterday to test out the pattern, and it's one of those projects that makes you remember how much fun these things are. You know, especially if you have a business, a lot of times you're making a lot of the same things over and over again for your business, and it can be kind of like, starts to feel like a job, which it is. You know, you're trying to make money at it, it's a job. But this is one of those projects you make it and you're like, this is why I do this. This is why I have an embroidery machine because it's just so stinking fun. And it's so cute. So thank you, thank you so much to Off With Their Threads Embroidery for allowing me to use your patterns in my tutorials. You guys, we have so, I like I just add to cart, add to cart, add to cart. I have a huge list of patterns that I wanna go through. So we're gonna be here for a while going through Off With Their Threads Embroidery patterns. So this is the version I'm doing today where the hole for the bags is the nose of the dog. The mo the more popular version that I've seen, and she has so many dog breeds, guys. Like, if you have a dog and you're like, I want one that looks like a Chihuahua, she's got a Chihuahua. I want a Labrador, she's got a Labrador. Whatever dog breed you can think of, she's probably got a design for it. But the hole for those bags are on a different part of the dog's body. And it's the most clever thing I've ever seen. It's just, it's just so fun, it's so cute, it's so cool. So there's another member of their Facebook group that has put out a tutorial for that version. I will have their channel and I will have their video linked down in the description of this video here. I just really wanted to make it and you know if I make it, I gotta share it, I gotta put a tutorial out for it. So we're gonna do this one because we got Halloween coming up. This is a nice little ghost dog, so cute. So if you're new to the Oakler's YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, anything at all you wanna say, leave it down in the comment section. So if you find another pattern on the site that you'd like to see a tutorial for, make sure you leave a comment down below saying what it is. Also, let me know if you wanna see it on the multi-needle or on the single needle. The nice thing about the multi-needle, for a pattern like this especially, a size like this, is that I can make two of these at a time. I can just put two of them in one big hoop bump, just pump them out, especially if I was making these to sell, that's going to save a ton of time. And as a small business owner, saving time is saving money. All right, let's get started on this little cutie patootie. 
All right, so here are the supplies we're gonna be using today. First, you're gonna want tear away stabilizer. This is just this is just tear away stabilizer, nothing fancy about it. For bags, we definitely don't wanna be cutting this away. We just wanna be able to rip it out when we're done. Next, you're gonna need your vinyl or felt. This is for the exterior of the bag. I'm just using this beautiful vinyl right here. The nice thing about embroidery machines is that it's it's almost easier to use the thicker material on an embroidery machine than it is to you on a sewing machine. So especially if you have embroidery that you're a little nervous to use on a sewing machine because of needle breaks, skip stitches, things like that, I would suggest you try it on an embroidery machine. They just seem to be able to handle a little bit more. Next, I have my vinyl for my applique. You know, I'm using my little ghosty, so I have this like iridescent white vinyl. It's gonna be so cute. And then I have my lining fabric. I am just using quilt cotton here, no interfacing, anything like that. This is great that you can use this. We don't have any raw edges, so you don't have to worry about the fraying sides of the quilt cotton showing at any point. It's all tucked in nice and neat. Finally, you're gonna need a zipper. Your zipper needs to be at least seven inches long. The longer, the better. So I think this is probably a 12 inch zipper. You can get these number three zippers off of Etsy. I buy mine from Zip It. I will have a link down in the description of this video for the source for that. And then for today, we're actually gonna add this little clasp here. Now I'm actually not, this is like a lobster clasp on a D-ring already. We're gonna use that. So you can see on this first version here, we have a pretty big little tab. This is a one inch wide tab. You could definitely thread a keychain onto this. It already has a lobster clasp. I probably will end up doing that. But for the next version, I have this little swivelly lobster clasp that's already attached to the D-ring. This is about three quarters of an inch wide at the bottom. So when I cut my tab, I will cut it three quarters of an inch wide, and then I will use the recommended length of it. All right, here are the tools I'll be using today. First, my ultimate tool, the Mighty Hoops. These are magnetic hoops. These are specifically made for multi-needle machines, and each hoop is specifically made for the type of machine you have. I cannot say enough good things about Mighty Hoops. They're just, I, I, I don't wanna use anything else but Mighty Hoops. Next, I have an X-Acto knife. Now, this is gonna be helpful for cutting out that center circle. So you can see on this version here, I left like a little plus sign and I just cut through the applique and then on the back, flip this out, I did cut through the lining, through the tearaway and through the backing of that vinyl. So I only left one layer of vinyl. It's the layer from the applique. I made that little plus sign. You could also use your X-Acto knife and just cut out the circle entirely so that this is just a hole with a satin stitch around it. That's what the pattern recommends or you could skip the satin stitch completely and just finish the bag and once the bag is done, punch a hole in this with your rivet press, hole punch, and then set a grommet, which I think is another great option. I'm not gonna be showing you that today because I don't have my rivet press over here. I probably should get one for this location actually. But I, I do highly recommend a grommet for this, especially if you're gonna be using it a whole bunch or you're gonna be selling them. But the satin stitch looks so, so nice too. Also remember, if you don't wanna use this as like a waste bag or anything like that, just don't cut anything right here. And then you're just gonna have this beautiful design and it's just a cute little wristlet that can be a coin pouch, a good pouch for kids for school. So, so many fun options for this bag. Next, I have all my cutty things. I have my little thread snips and then my tweezers. Like I said, this is my embroidery surgeons you know, tools of choice. I'm just, this is what I do all the time. And I also have my applique scissors since I will be doing applique. These are just nice and curved, so it makes it nice and easy to cut close to the thread. Obviously another must have for embroidery machines. I have a rotary cutter because I will be cutting squares here. I'll be using masking tape. I love masking tape because I can sew over it. I can rip it out. It doesn't leave any sticky residue. Love that. My threads today, I like using Madeira and also Glide. I mix them up all the time, but these are two of my favorite threads to use on my machine. And finally, I'm gonna use a little bit of Heat and Bond Ultra Hold. So at the very, very end of this project, we have a small hole in the lining of the bag, just like we do normally with bags. And we need to close that. On this version here, I did close it using my sewing machine. So you can see, I just pinched it right here and sewed along that bottom edge, which if you have a sewing machine nearby, just do that and it's super fast. However, I know a lot of you guys don't have sewing machines or don't use your sewing machines. You do everything on the embroidery machine, which is so cool that you can do that. So in that case, I will be using a little bit of heat and bond. This is just like super sticky heat and bond. And you iron it between two layers of fabric and they are stuck together forever. They are best friends till the end of time. 
All right, so let's go over all the pattern pieces. So from the exterior, which is this orange vinyl right here, and also this is for my applique. But from the exterior, we have a top and a bottom of the front of our bag, and that zipper is gonna go right in between them. You're gonna wanna use felt or vinyl here because we are leaving these edges raw. Quilt cotton's not gonna be your friend unless you fold it over. But with this type of bag, I really would suggest something a little bit beefier than quilt cotton. And then I have my little tab. I did cut this three quarters of an inch thick so that it will work well with my little ring I have. Now I cut myself a little four inch by four inch piece of white vinyl. This is gonna be for my doggy. This is for the applique. This is the only piece of applique for this particular design. If you have a different design, different dog, you might need more colors. And then the last piece of vinyl is for the back of the bag. It's just one nice big piece. From the lining, I have the top and the bottom and the back as well, just like the exterior. Now on the top and the bottom of the lining, I do have this folded over a half of an inch and pressed down with my iron. I do suggest quilt cotton here, it's gonna be easier. But just, if you already have the iron out because you're prepping for this, just do it now, just fold it over. It can be 3 eighths of an inch, it can be half of an inch. You just wanna fold it over a good amount, press it down so you have a nice, non-raw straight edge because we're just gonna attach those to the back side of the zipper so that everything's nice and clean. We don't have to worry about anything unraveling. Okay, first things first, we're going to hoop our cutaways. I'm just gonna lay down my bottom hoop. And I like my cutaway to be quite a bit bigger. So I lay my cutaway over my bottom hoop as best I can. And then I'll just take my top hoop snap it in place. See how easy that is? No screwing, no pulling. I just love that. So this hoop is an eight inch by 13 inch magnetic mighty hoop. I could easily do two of these bags at once. I can just separate the file so I have two of them going at the same time and I can bust this out super fast. For today's tutorial, I am only gonna do one to avoid any sort of confusion. I just want you to know that if you wanted to make a lot of these, this is a great size hoop if you have the machine that can use it. Okay, so let's go stick this in the machine and start stitching it out. Okay, so we have our hoop loaded and we have our design on our monitor. You can see there's a lot of colors here. Let me just go to the colors. There are a lot of color changes here. However, most of these steps are just construction steps and you're never gonna see the thread. So as you can see, every step that is a construction step, I use the number one. And then for the color steps, I use different color numbers. My suggestion, if your machine doesn't already stop after each color change, make sure you set it so that it will. So I set my machine to automatic manual meaning it will automatically go to the next color, but it's gonna stop until I tell it to start the next stitch. So this way I can double check the pattern, check my design and make sure that the color that it's going to do next is the color I actually want. So I always suggest tracing out your design, even if you know the design is a lot smaller than the hoop, just trace it out to make sure that your, your feet aren't gonna be touching any of the sides of the hoop. It's always good just to check. All right, perfect. So this first step is going to be a placement stitch. So we're just gonna stitch it straight on the tearaway and it's just gonna kind of show us where everything needs to go. Okay, great, so you can see this is the outline of our bag and then this right here is the outline for our zipper. So the first thing we're gonna do is tack down our zipper. So grab your zipper and lay it right side up. And you can see my zipper is much, much bigger than it needs to be, that's fine. My zipper pull is all the way off, not close to any of the stitches at all. That's exactly what I want. If you have a zipper end, this little metal thing, keep all the metal away from the stitching for now. I will tell you when to move the zipper pull. But your zipper should just line up perfectly with this bigger rectangle right here. So you should be able to just cover it with your zipper tape like that. Now I'm gonna grab some of my scotch tape and I'm gonna tape down the ends to make sure it doesn't move anywhere. And then we're gonna tack this down. All right, so this next step, step number two, is going to tack down the top and bottom of our zipper tape. Once again, just keep your zipper pull way out of the way. Okay, once we have our zipper tacked down, now we're going to add the top piece. So this is gonna go over that small little bit over here. This is gonna be your vinyl or your felt. And what you're gonna do here is you're going to line this up so that it covers those tack down stitches. If you have it like go right on those tack down stitches or a little bit above, those stitches will be seen in the end. So you wanna get this really close to the zipper teeth. It doesn't need to be touching them, but it does need to be covering those tack down stitches. Find the straightest side of your vinyl and use that to line it up. All right, as you can see, I just taped that down. So now the next step is going to tack down this bottom edge of your top vinyl. 
All right, now you're gonna grab your exterior bottom piece and you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna line it up so that it's covering those tack down stitches and you want it really close to the zipper teeth or else this next step might not catch it. So I'm just gonna transfer my tape over down here. Okay, so this next step is going to just tack down the top edge of the bottom piece of vinyl. Okay, so now that we have the stitching around the zipper nice and in place, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna just tack down the entire edges. So the next step is gonna go around the entire top edge, creating the whole outline of the top. And then the step after that, we'll do the same thing with the bottom. So for this particular pattern, these are steps five and six. Okay, so now the structural part for now is done. Now the fun part, we're gonna do the little ghosty on the front. So this next step is gonna create an outline of where we're gonna need to put our applique vinyl. So I didn't realize I used the same color thread as my vinyl, but that's okay. I can see where it needs to be. So now I'm gonna grab my little applique vinyl here and I'm just going to cover it over that trace out, making sure it's covering every single bit of it. And then I'm just gonna tape that down. Okay, so I have my vinyl taped down for the applique and now we're gonna tack it down. This is step eight. So now I'm gonna take the hoop out of the machine and I'm gonna use my applique scissors to cut as close as I can to these stitches. Okay, so I'm gonna remove the tape from my applique. And I know it can be a little tricky to cut applique when you have a thicker vinyl. But one thing I want you to remember, so I don't know if you can see, but like right here we have these little tiny nooks. You don't have to cut into there. This is the finished product. That satin stitching is going to completely cover those little tiny cracks and crevices. So you really just want to cut as close to the thread as you can. But if you have a little, a little like little nook here, you don't have to cut into that. All right, once I get most of it cut off, then I will just kind of go back and just trim in little places. Luckily with this design, the satin stitch is a pretty thick satin stitch, which means if you don't get as close as you want to, you, you should be okay. You shouldn't have a whole lot showing, but it's always good to take that time and just get the vinyl cut as close as possible to those stitches. Even if you cut the stitches a little bit, that's okay. The satin stitch will cover it up. Just make sure you don't cut the underside vinyl. You don't want to cut that orange vinyl. All right, now that's all cleaned up, let's take this back to the machine and continue on with our design. All right, so now we're on step nine and that's gonna be that little leash that goes right down in the front of the body. Next up is the collar. Now we're gonna do the satin stitching that goes around the entire dog. So now we have the entire outline of the dog all satin stitched down. You can see all those raw edges of our vinyl are gone. That looks so good. Now we're on step 12 and this is gonna be for the little tongue. All right, the next step is gonna be for the eyes and mouth. Okay, so now we're done with most of the applique. We're gonna go ahead and attach the lining that goes to the back of the front panel. So let's take this out. Okay, so now we're gonna attach the lining pieces. So take your top lining and lay it right side up. And remember you have that folded edge that you pressed with your iron. Make sure that folded edge is down by these thicker lines right here where your zipper is in place. So I'm actually going to have it cover it and almost touch that thin center line. So you see this like thicker rectangle here, that's where my zipper is, and this thin center line here, that's the midpoint line. I'm gonna have my lining almost touch it, if not just touch it. And now I'm just gonna use a piece of tape and I'm going to tape this down really well. If you need to tape all along the long edges as well, go ahead and do that. With masking tape, if you stitch over it, you will be fine, don't worry. But I'm just gonna tape it down like that and take it back to the machine. As you insert it into the machine, feel underneath and make sure it's not moving around. So I'm gonna push the whole thing in and then I'm gonna look underneath. You just wanna make sure that lining doesn't slip as you're putting the hoop back in the machine. So now this next step is going to stitch down that top lining piece. All right, once you have that stitched down, let's remove it from the machine again. All right, so let's flip it over and make sure it all caught. 
perfect. It caught all the edges nicely. So now we're gonna do the same thing with the bottom part. So I have my bottom piece of lining here. The folded over edge is gonna go up and it's gonna just cover the stitching for the zipper. And it doesn't have to touch the other lining. It just needs to get really close to it. You don't want it getting so close to the zipper that you have to worry about the zipper catching the lining. That's the whole point of top stitching down lining is so that the zipper doesn't catch it. So we don't want it too close, but if it's not close enough, then this next step won't catch this top edge at all. All right, now let's go put this back in the machine and just stitch down the bottom portion of the lining. So make sure you check underneath that everything was caught. My lining was a little short on the bottom, but we're okay. So now we're going to stitch down the placement for this nose part, which is gonna be the hole that the bags come through. So let's go ahead and remove this from the hoop while we prep this. All right, so let's flip this over real quick. And as you can see, my lining is a little short. I mean, it got caught, that's fine, but that's one of those things where I wasn't really paying attention to how far down this lining went. And I should have, you, you, because you already have all the stitching here to tell you where it needs to go. So I should have checked that, but this is gonna be fine. So now what we wanna do is don't take it out of the hoop. We're not taking this out of the hoop until we're completely done. But we wanna cut this hole open. Now, if you're gonna use a grommet, you're gonna skip the satin stitch and just move on, and this will be a good placement stitch for where you need to punch your hole and install your grommet after the bag is done. You could install your grommet right now if you're if you can if you're using some sort of a hand tool or something like that. You could definitely install your grommet right now as well. Nothing else is going to be stitching here. Just make sure again you don't do the satin stitch. Don't don't do a satin stitch over a grommet. That, that's not going to end well. So I'm going to pull out my cutting mat and I'm going to grab my X-Acto knife and I'll show you. Before what I did was I just cut a little plus symbol. So you can just go through all the layers. Don't cut the stitching though. Just get really close to it. Just like that. Just be careful. And then I went to the back side and I grabbed a seam ripper and I gently seam ripped the lining. That's what I'm going for right now is just the lining. Just enough to get a pair of scissors in there and then I just trimmed around that circle with my scissors, just like this. See? Nice and easy. So once I had the lining trimmed down, I did the same thing with the tear away. Now tear away, you can actually just tear it away. So if you get your fingers in there, you can just pull the interfacing out. And then you'll notice you have two layers of vinyl, right? You have your white applique vinyl, and then you also have your orange vinyl that's part of this backing. Now you could leave them both, but for my first bag, I did choose to trim down that backing vinyl. So for me, it's that orange vinyl. And I just lifted it up quadrant by quadrant. Since we cut this into fourths, I can just lift up each one of these and cut it. All right, and that's how I prepped my first bag. So you can see I have this little plus sign cut here, and then I can just satin stitch around, and this will just be what holds my bag. You can clean it up a little bit with some scissors. But what I'm actually gonna do is I am going to cut this off. For this one, I'm going to just make a hole. So I'm using my X-Acto knife, or I could use my scissors just like I did on the back. And I'm just gonna go around nice and close to those stitches without cutting the stitches and I'm just gonna go through my exterior vinyl. Now, with your X-Acto knife, you don't have to cut each layer like I just did. You could cut all of these at once, but I wanted to show you if you wanted to do this little plus symbol here, I wanted to show you how I did that. All right, so I did the X-Acto, but it was kind of messy, so I'm just sticking my applique scissors in here and just carefully cutting to clean it up. Because I don't want any little bits of thread, you know, peeking through here. The thing you want to be careful with when you're doing this is that you're not pushing on your stabilizer too much and kind of stretching it out. Because then what can happen is when you put this back in the machine, the placement might not be perfect. You might have a registration error, which is when your design shifts and it doesn't stitch where it's supposed to, which is very frustrating. All right, so I think this is gonna be okay. We'll see, won't we? So now we're gonna take this back to the machine and we're gonna do a satin stitch around this little nose, which is gonna be the hole 
for the bags. All right, I just wanted to take it out and look at it. You don't have to take it out of the hoop right now, or you don't have to take it out of the, you don't have to take it out of the machine right now. I just wanted to take a peek at this, and it looks really, really cute. So this is the back of it, and here is the front. Where are you going? And that looks adorable. So, okay, so let's put this back in the machine. So this next step is step 18, and it's gonna provide a placement stitch for where our little side tab is gonna go. So here is my tab, and here is my hardware. Now you're gonna to wanna to be careful if you're using hardware because you do not want this to get caught up at any point. So I am going to thread this through, and what I'm gonna do is place this into the bag just like this. So the thing is, is we will not be sewing next to the zipper anymore, except for on the sides over here. So if your hardware is kind of close to the zipper over here, that's okay. But we do want to tape everything in place as much as possible so that we don't accidentally hit this hardware. So first I'm going to tape down my tab so that it's covering the placement stitches over here on the left. And I do have it overhanging the stitches just a little bit. I'm going to also tape down my hardware because I don't want that to move. So I'm gonna tape it to the center of the bag. There we go. So now this next step is just going to stitch down this tab and hold it in place. Okay, now let's remove this from the machine to just prep for the, the last bit of this. All right, let's remove this tape. I did get it taped into the stitching, that's fine. I'm gonna keep the tape over here in the center. But I am gonna remove the tape around the zipper and also here on the sides. So now we wanna move our zipper pull so that it is more than halfway, just like this. Don't get it so close to the edge over here because we are gonna be stitching down over here. So I just move it so that it's about a little over an inch from the side and I can tape down my zipper pull as well, especially if you have a bigger zipper pull, you can tape it down. And now we're gonna flip this over. You might find this easiest with some tweezers, but what we wanna do is kind of fold back the lining and cut into our tearaway, and we want to rip out the tearaway that's around the zipper. So just go all the way around one side, and you'll notice there's that center midpoint line that's a stitch. We're going to cut that out. So it's just that really thin center stitch. Just cut it out of there. We don't need it. That was just for placement. So you can see I can flip back the top piece and just gently rip out the stabilizer. Tweezers are very handy here if you have some that just doesn't wanna come out. And this is also something you can clean up after the bag is done as well. The big thing here is that we just want this open. All right, and the reason we do that is so that when we turn this out, we don't have to fight that stabilizer. So if you need to retape, go ahead and retape. Okay, so while we have this here, grab your exterior back piece and we're gonna lay it right side down on the right side of our stitching and just make sure it's completely covering all of the edges. There we go. I'm just gonna grab my tape and I'll tape it down here and then we'll put it back in the machine. All right, let's put this back in the machine and we're going to stitch down this backing piece in place. Once that's stitched down, go ahead and remove it from the hoop. So you see the back of the backing here. Now we're gonna flip this over to look at the back of our hoop, which is where our lining is. And just like we did with the backing, we're gonna take our lining piece, which is that bigger piece, and we're gonna make sure it completely covers everything. And it's right side down, so linings are right sides together. Grab some tape and be generous with the tape here, okay? We don't want this lining moving. Anytime we have something on the bottom of the hoop, we don't see what's going on down there. So if something gets shifted, folded, moved around, we don't know until it's too late. So the more tape, the better. All right, let's go put this back in the machine. This is stitch number 21, and this is your final step. Okay, so now you can remove this from the hoop, and then I like to just tear away everything first. So take all your tape off, and then just start ripping your tear away completely out of the seams. All right, once the tear away is done, flip it so that you have the lining wrong side up. So you can see this little hole right here. And we're gonna start at the bottom here. So I'm just cutting straight, and then I'm cutting about a quarter of an inch away from the stitching. In the pattern, she suggests you increase your cut a little bit over here by the zipper. That's fine. You just don't want that zipper ripping out at any point. Just 
go all the way around, trimming down around your seam. And then once you get down here to the bottom, we don't want to cut that close or along this opening. So we're just going to veer off, okay? There we go. Okay, I am going to trim down a little bit of the vinyl because I don't need that. So I can trim down both of the vinyl edges. And you can see because I lined up my cut a little bit short here, I don't have much room to work with for this closing. So we're gonna, we're gonna finagle that. So let's flip this out through that lining hole very carefully so you don't rip anything. Okay, so you can see I have my vinyl right side out and I wanna close up this area here before we move on. So as you can see, I have my lining right side out. And what I wanna do now is close up this hole. So what you can do is take this little piece of lining and fold it over and you should have excess of your other lining as well if you didn't get it too short like I did. But what I'm gonna do actually, so if you fold both of them over together, you can just stitch along that area. But I'm actually gonna use some of this heat and bond. So I'm gonna cut off just a really skinny piece. Let's see, just as big as that, like that. Let's try this. So what I'm trying to do is take this extra piece of lining that's hanging over fold it down and then wrap it around the bottom of the seam, just like this. So I'm gonna grab some clips to just help me visualize this step. This is easier if, again, you didn't accidentally make your other lining panel too short, like I did. There we go. Now, honestly, it'd be pretty easy for me to just go to the sewing machine and just stitch down along this clipped edge, but I really do wanna try this heat and bond. So I'm gonna trim it down a little bit more and I am just gonna kind of tuck it in under this flap like that. So first I have my heat and bond cut so that the glue side is down against the fabric underneath it and the paper side is up. And I'm just gonna press on the back of that paper. I'm not supposed to use steam. You're not supposed to use steam with this, that's what it says. I'm just gonna press along the paper, let it cool. And now I have like a shiny strip right here, that's that glue. And now I'm going to take the other part of the lining and fold it over and then press that down as well. And that should glue it, I think. Okay, so it says you're supposed to hold it down for eight seconds. All right, I am probably not using this stuff correctly, but I honestly, I had a little bit of trouble getting it to stay. So I think that for me, sewing this down is easier. But once you have it either sewn or glued in place, now we're going to flip it so that we see the right side of the vinyl. So you're gonna flip it through that open zipper. This is why you had to leave the zipper open. Let that tape come out. And now just use your fingers to poke out all of these little corners. It's a little tiny bag. It's so cute. All right, and there you go. How adorable is this? Oh, I love this. I do actually like that we left this hole open. I think that that looks a lot better. I think that the hole open does look better than the plus sign. I think this could have been a little bit tighter if I need to. I can go to my sewing machine and just kind of stitch down over here or even add a rivet to this just to kind of tighten it up so this isn't going all over the place. But I think this is just adorable. All right, so what do you think? Look how adorable he is. Oh, I love him so much. I wanna make all of the little doggies. There are so, so many options and not just doggies too. You have little babies and characters. I think this is awesome. Like I said, I do think I should have probably put my tab in a little bit closer. Um, again, an easy fix to this is if you have a rivet, just add a rivet there or you can just stitch this at the sewing machine so that it's not kind of like woo all over the place. But this turned out so cool. I love the hole on the center. Again, I think grommet is still best, but this is really, really durable. So I wouldn't worry about this, you know, not lasting a long time. I think it would be great. So I wanted to show you, here's the first one I made. I did go ahead and attach a key ring to the side. It was really easy to install. So now I can take this and I can just clip it onto my leash. I did add the bags to it. So you can see it just comes right out their little nose. Some of the other more cheeky designs, they come out of a different part, which I think I just love. I love that so much. It's so cute. So this is one of those things that like, again, you're gonna make a hundred of these things. You're gonna make one, you're gonna have such a good time doing it. It comes together so easily. And then you're just gonna keep making more because especially if you make one of the ones for like a dog breed, like you make one for your dog and then your neighbor sees it and they're gonna be like, can you make one for my dog? And 
probably, yeah, they're patterns for every kind of dog on the website. So you're going to be making them for everybody in the neighborhood, and then it's going to be like a club. It's going to be like a poop bag club. I just love it so much. So once again, thank you so much to Off With Their Threads for allowing me to film this tutorial today. God, guys, I am so hooked on these things. If you have any questions whatsoever, leave them down in the comment section below. I will have links for everything down in the description. I hope you're having a great day. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.